So cosmology is the attempt to answer some very broad, complex questions about the universe. What's going to happen to the universe? What does it consist of? These are among the deepest and most profound questions that humans have ever asked. When did the universe begin? We now know the answer. It's about 14 billion years ago. We'll see in this part. But perhaps a bolder question is, when will the universe end? So the topics here are the universe on the larger scale, the expanding universe. And you see the other topics we'll be trying to cover. At the turn of the 20th century, as observational techniques got better and better, in 1920, Edwin Hub uh, Hubble was able to observe the nearby galaxies, the, their Doppler effect, showing their motion, and he found out that the galaxies are all moving away from us. Not only that, but the further they are, the faster they are moving away from us. Uh, he made a graph, which you see here, called the Hubble graph, which plots the velocity, how fast they're moving away from us, versus its distance. And you notice that all the galaxies line up in a straight line. That means that there is a relationship connecting the velocity to the distance they are away from us. And the relationship is written right here that the uh, velocity is equal to a constant called the Hubble constant times the distance. The slope of this particular graph, in fact, is the Hubble constant and tells you something about the rate of speed. Uh, the slope in this particular graph is about 70 kilometers per second per megaparsec. That means uh, a, a gal galaxy one megaparsec away from us will be moving at 70 kilometers per second away from us, two megaparsecs away from us, twice that or 140 kilometers, etc. Uh, we can also specify the, the uh, Hubble constant in terms of kilometers per second per million light years. So it's about 22 kilometers per second per million light years. That means a galaxy one million light years away will be moving away from us 22 kilometers per second. Two million light years away, 40 to 44 kilometers per second, etc. Now, if the galaxies are all moving away from us, that means the universe is expanding. At some time in the past, they must have been closer together. Uh, in fact, sometime in the past, their size must have been nearly zero. This would correspond to the beginning of the universe, implying that the universe is not infinitely old. How long ago was the size zero? We sort of look back in time, the universe was smaller, 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 smaller a time in the past and it was tiny until it, the size was essentially zero. Uh, we, can we can try to calculate the age of the universe or at least get an estimate of the age of the universe by using this equation velocity equals Hubble constant times time. We know that there is a relationship between distance, velocity, of time, and time. Distance equals velocity times time. What we're going to do is we're going to plug the, this distance into this equation. So we will have that velocity is equal to Hubble constant times Vt and then solve that equation for d. We will now try to get an estimate of the age of the universe. We know from Hubble's graph that velocity is equal to the Hubble constant times uh, distance. 
we also know that velocity equals distance divided by time, or solving that equation for time, time equals distance divided by velocity. We're going to plug in for velocity, we're going to plug in this number. So distance divided by velocity equals distance divided by h times d. Note that these distances will cancel, and so the only thing that's left is 1 over the Hubble constant. So the time, the age of the universe, is 1 over the Hubble constant. We can actually do a calculation here uh, using 1 over the Hubble constant, and it comes out to be approximately 14 billion years. Here is an, an example of that calculation using a value of 70 kilometers per second per megaparsec. Uh, we will calculate the time by using this formula 1 over h naught, where h naught is that number 70 uh, kilometers per meg megaparsec per second. Uh, we're going to change the megaparsecs that distance to kilometers, since we have kilometers on the bottom, we'd like to have kilometers in both. So 1 megaparsec is 3.1 times 10 to the 19 kilometers. And then, of course, <clears throat> instead of seconds, we'd like to change seconds here to years. Uh, one year is 3.15 times 10 to the 7 seconds in a year. And after all the calculations, this comes out to 1.4 times 10 to the 10th. Or 14 billion light years. To take a closer look at this and determine the eventual fate of the universe, we, uh, we ultimately need to know the density of the universe. Now assume, for example, you're standing on a building of uh, height h here. Let's say, for argument's sake, that h is one mile. You're standing on a building one mile high. And a tennis ball comes by you and you find its speed as it goes by you is one mile an hour. And the question is, well, how long did it take the tennis ball to get to you, to go that one mile? Well, you may want to say one hour, but the point is, what was happening previous, until the ball got to you previously? Well, it was moving faster. It's been slowing down because it's on a planet that slows things down. So, the amount of time should be less because it was going faster in the past. Well, the same thing is going, the same thing happens when we uh, consider the universe as a whole. There are two possibilities for the universe uh, it could keep expanding forever, like this ball could keep going up, it could stop and collapse back, like this ball will come back. Assuming that the only relevant force is gravity, which way it goes, it depends on the density of the universe. So in this slide we see uh, if this was applied to a planet, if that ball, tennis ball, was moving at constant speed, then this would be the appropriate curve. And therefore the time would be that time. This is an estimate of it that time. But if, but if the universe was faster in the past, then the time it took the universe to get to where it is now would be less than it was before. And of course, what happens, this depends on the escape velocity, how this happens. It depends on the escape velocity, which is the mass. If this is a planet, it, it, it follows this equation. It depends on the mass and the size of the planet, the radius, or in other words, it depends on the density. We can also say that what happens depends on the density of the universe. If the universe has no density, in other words, it's got no mass, then obviously the tennis ball will escape 
if it has some critical density that will slow it down or try to slow it down so but it slows down as much as it can but never actually stops that's the critical density and obviously if it stops and comes back that's past the critical density now if one of these other scenarios happens that the age of the universe is not quite what we said before the age of the universe will now be less than the 14 billion years we calculated uh, so for example if the density of the universe is exactly the critical density we can see that it's going to be actually about two-thirds of the 14 of, of the value that we calculated earlier uh, it's convenient to actually talk about the density of the universe by defining this thing called gamma which is just the ratio of the density of the universe to the critical density the density that we need to stop it so if there is no mass again gamma is zero or if the density of the universe is exactly equal to the critical density then gamma is one and of course if the density of the universe is greater than the critical density then gamma is, is greater than one and you can see here that uh, how according to these scenarios the age of the universe is a little bit different 14 billion years for this scenario about two-thirds of that for this scenario and even less less than half of that for this particular scenario now all this of course depends all this depends on the value of gamma uh, of the guy of the I'm sorry uh, on the value of the uh, Hubble constant if the Hubble constant is is different than this curve the slope is less and h will be less and of course the Hubble constant could be bigger and the slope would be bigger and h would be bigger if uh, the Hubble constant h not is bigger the universe universe is expanding faster the faster the expansion the less time the universe has to grow to its present size therefore for a fixed density the bigger the value of the Hubble constant the younger the age of the universe And of course, the, the latest results from the Hubble Space Telescope are that, in fact, the Hubble constant is about 80 now. Uh, later, using more distant galaxies, we get a more precise value that is actually approximately 72. But here we come up to something really strange. Uh, with, let's we assume the Hubble constant is 72 and with no deceleration at all the age of the universe comes out to be 13.9 billion years old astronomers expected actually the universe to be younger than this Hubble time because matter in the universe should be making it slowing it down so it's probably the age is less this is a, like a maximum estimation the problem here is that if you if you make the age of the universe younger let's say 13 billion years uh, we actually find star clusters that are older than that so that's telling us that something is fishy here the age of the universe must be actually closer to 14 billion years but how how is that possible so in this graph you see the, the three type of scenarios uh, assuming the age, the universe is moving with uh, the galaxies are moving with constant uh, acceleration, then the age of the universe is about 14 billion years, which is the Hubble constant. If, however, uh, the universe is flat, in other words, the, the density of the universe is such that uh, the galaxies will never stop expanding, but will get very close to it then the universe is nine and a half billion years and if the universe is supposed to recollapse again stop and come back then 
the, the age of the universe is less than 5 billion years. Now, we know that can't be true because our sun is 5 billion years old. So the age of the universe cannot be less than 5 billion years. In 1998, astronomer, astronomers discovered something even more strange. Uh, by studying galaxies that are further and further away, they found that the universe is not slowing down at all, but it's actually speeding up. It's as if if we looked at the tennis ball that's going up and, we, and found that the tennis ball is actually going faster and faster as it's going up, as if something, a rocket, was propelling it up. Uh, this is what's happening to the universe. It's acting, it's exploding. It's accelerating. It's not decelerating. It's not slowing down. It's doing the exact opposite. It's accelerating as if there was something anti-gravity acting against gravity, making it go faster and fa faster and faster. One of the things that does, it, it solves this age problem that we just had. Because now, as you can see from the graph, the age of the universe is pretty close to the Hubble time. A little bit less than that, but not too far. It's instead of 14 billion years, it's about 13.7 billion years. And the thing that's causing this expansion, this, this cosmic anti-gravity, well, we have no idea what it is. But we have given it a name, so once we give it a name, uh, a little bit better than no name, but we, we, what we've called it is dark energy. So dark energy, energy that we really can't see or really know too much about, is whatever it is that makes the universe accelerate. We call that dark energy. So what is dark energy? Well does not shine. That's why it's called dark. It is energy because it causes the universe to accelerate. Does not attract gravitationally like normal matter or dark matter. It repels. But exactly what it is, well, here's one possibility that dark energy is actually energy in space itself. That space is like a spring that pushes things apart. And in the past, when space was small, this force of the spring was not that uh, important. But now that that the space, the universe is large bigger, space is large bigger, it has a m more important effect. For the universe to be the way it is right now, then dark energy, the energy that is pushing the universe apart, has to be the major component of the universe. This little uh, graph gives you the percent of the things that are in the universe. And we see dark energy has to be 70%, and dark matter, which we discussed earlier, is 25%. That means only 5% is things we understand, because both dark matter and dark energy are things we don't fully understand. Uh, in particular, the heavy elements, which is uh, basically you and me, we're made up of the heavy elements, is only uh, three hundredths of one percent of the matter in the universe. Universe. So this little picture here gives you uh, an idea of the history of the universe from the Big Bang to today. Uh, when the Big Bang occurred approximately 13.7 billion years ago, the universe was small and also very hot. As it got bigger, matter in the universe cooled off. Uh, initially, the, the first afterglow, which means the first light, was emitted at about 380,000 years after the Big Bang. And this is basically a limit of how far we can see. We cannot see before, beyond that because uh, there was no light being emitted. Uh, and 
first stars were born about 14 million years after the Big Bang. And then the galaxies formed. And now we are at a very cold universe, as we saw already. The universe has cooled down to 3 degrees Kelvin. Now, because the universe was hot early, we should be able to see that that radiation that was emitted uh, shortly after the Big Bang, uh, which now is only three degrees and we, uh, three degrees Kelvin, and we saw that, that radiation is called the microwave background radiation. So the universe was smaller and hotter in the past. At about one second after the Big Bang, the universe was very hot about 10 to the 10 degrees Kelvin, so hot that atoms were ionized. In other words, atoms could not exist as we know them today. Electrons were roaming free without being bound to nuclei. But 300,000 years after the Big Bang, the universe had cooled down to about 3,000 degrees Kelvin. And now electrons combined to make neutral atoms. Atoms were formed at this point. And this is the point at which the universe became transparent to photons which means light could pass through the universe. It is now uh, for, by 14 billion years since that happened and the universe is now very cold. So the universe, when the universe was very hot in the first, less than the first seconds, uh, the universe was, for, was filled with quarks and primordial particles like electrons free electrons, uh, and then at the three minutes light nuclei and free electrons, and at about 300,000 years light became transparent and emitted light now, after this point, and that light has stretched or cooled down or the wavelength has stretched so that it is now in the microwave uh, part of the spectrum and it's called the microwave background radiation.